Amen. You, you, you know, one of the things that uh, I hope everybody had a great uh, week, and I hope you had a great weekend, and we're looking forward for people to have a, a great week. Uh, just, we just pray for God to, to continue to be with us and guide us. I like, I like what my mom says, that, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Who's up there for shall be ashamed of me? Not you. It's not about you shaming somebody. It's not about you trying to shame somebody. He said, who's up there shall be ashamed of me? You trying to get them ashamed of what their behaviors are opposed to the fact that they need to know Christ. He, so he said, therefore, first, that verse 38, Who's out there for shall be ashamed of me? We're sitting there figuring it's okay to get somebody to be ashamed of themselves. It's not being ashamed of themselves that makes a difference, it's being ashamed of Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the scripture's saying? Isn't that what the scripture wants us to do? So that we get people to focus on Christ. We trying to get people to focus on themselves. When you try to get somebody to be ashamed of themselves, that means they're not focused on Christ. We, we, we don't trust the fact that if we get a person to focus on Christ, to follow Christ, we don't trust that they, their, their behavior will change. <laughs> and, and the bad thing about it is, didn't your behavior change when you start focusing on Christ? <laughs> I mean, think about it. You don't change because of your ability, you change because of his ability. You don't change because of legalism. That's why he said the laws, he had a couple of the new commandments because the law could not do anything to the law or to the flesh. So you sitting there making your ministry a ministry of shame, a ministry of death, who are you impressing? Think about it. Who are you impressing? Because the scripture said, what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? You give your soul, you give your change of soul so that somebody else can be ashamed? Oh, go and vote for somebody in another different party? What do you, what do you give in exchange for your soul? What, what do you give? Verse 37, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Why would you put your soul in jeopardy? And I know some of you said, well, I didn't put my soul in jeopardy. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? If you sit there and show and teach and act and bear corrupt fruit, why are you exchanging that? Why do you think that is better than to love one another? Why did you believe? Since people go to different, and, and ministry to God, and this is, should be pointed to ministers as well. You All of you sit there and, and try to get people to think it's better to, to, to have the vision instead of preaching the gospel, and yet you talk about serving him. Listen to yourself and what you do. From the ministers in the pulpit to the body of Christ, listen to yourself and recognize that if it does not bear fruit, it is wrong and you don't, you're corrupt and you're going to be condemned. You're exchanging your soul for pride. You know, I, I, I don't say enough on it. You want if 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 you want to exchange your soul for division and discord among the brethren because you wanted to go your way, then you understand when you face him and you find yourself not where you thought you're supposed to be because you thought it's not important to bear the fruits of the spirit. You thought it was not important to let your light shine? Come on. 
What's that football player said? Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> he said, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father, which is the holy angels. So as we talk about this, what you give in exchange your soul, look at this. Let's put it back up here. Life in the spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus. Not in a ministry. Not in the color of your skin. He then said, therefore there is therefore no, no condemnation in which are in Christ Jesus. Not in the color of your skin. Not in the political party. Not in nationalism, but in Christ Jesus. Who walk what? Not after the flesh. So anytime you're sitting there walking after the flesh and viewing, looking at people after the flesh, condemning people after the flesh, he said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Why would you sit there and go back to the law of sin and death and pose the law of sin and death when he said then said that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus for what the law could not do? You sitting there using the law, using the law to shame somebody, using the law to condemn somebody, using the law to hate somebody, to hurt somebody, to kill somebody lead the whole congregation to, to hell because you sit there and try to do it by the law. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, why are you sitting there trying to enforce things by the law knowing that it was weak through the flesh? God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn what sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, not after the flesh, not after the flesh. If you're sitting there as a racist, if you're sitting there as a racist, whether you're black racist or white racist or brown racist or nationalist or politicalist, whatever, any of those type of things, he said that the righteous law might be filling us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's what the scripture is saying. You sitting there judging people, condemning people, harassing people, shaming people after the flesh. As if the, the law, they can fix the problem in their own flesh when you must be born again. You're not teaching people to be born again. You're teaching them, oh, I'm going to condemn them in the flesh. I want to fix things. In I, want, I want people to fix their problem through their flesh. I'm supposed to letting them fix, let the Holy Spirit fix them through the Spirit. Huh? You're trying to change people, teaching people, it's all right to hate. And the scripture said, that the righteousness of the law might be filled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Anytime you're looking at people, you're mindful of the flesh. Anytime you're condemning with people, you're mindful of the flesh. Anytime you're trying to impose legalism, you're mindful of the flesh. Anytime you sit there and say white superiority, black superiority, red superiority, or any other color, skin, or complexion superiority, you're doing things that mind the things of the flesh. And pastors, you're a political party. If you come from political bodies, you are minding, you are minding of the things of the flesh. When you get to the point, well, I don't like, I don't like a Democrat because he's progressive and he wants to change the status. He wants to sit there and take the flag, take the statues down of Robert e. Lee and all these other people because you're looking at the flesh and you're telling them they're looking at the flesh. And yet you're sitting there looking at the flesh. And then we got this division, and we got this, 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 this denial of history and everything else after the flesh. Because those things that were done, you got to sit there and say, the tree is known by its fruit. 
but we do we're supposed to go after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. Are you mindful of the things? Are you teaching people to be mindful of the things of the spirit? For to be carnally minded, listen this, to be carnally minded is death. You sitting there trying to shame people to be carnally minded, opposed to spiritual minded. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. If you be in Christ, if you teach people to be in Christ, they will be mindful of life and peace through the Spirit of God. Because the cardinal mind is enmity against God. That's what you need to understand. If you're sitting there allowing, endorsing racism, political partyism, <laughs> nationalism, you're mindful of your cardinal mind, and it is an enmity against God, not an enmity against one another. When you sit there, you're worried about whether you, you, you're going to get black and white thing. You're going against political party thing, Democrats, Republicans. You, 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 you're mindful of, of that, then you are in opposition with God. Nobody sit there and say you don't both have a different opinion, but you get to the point where you hate. You get to the point that you let some people do and lie. You don't care what they do as long as, they, they're, not, as, long as they're part of your party and do it your party way. Political parties, I mean, you saw the division that happened uh, in the last couple of years. You got people kicked out of a party because they do it, didn't follow the party's line. And we think it's okay. But he said, because the cardinal mind is empty against God. Who wants to be, be in? <laughs> Tell us the question, what would man give in exchange for soul? Why would you think you want to be an empty against God for your flesh? Because of flesh. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither do you can be. But maybe that's why you would exchange your soul. Because you're not subject to the laws of God. Maybe that's why they couldn't recognize Jesus. Because they were trying to be the laws, follow the laws. That they couldn't even see the spirit of the intent behind these laws. So that they are in the flesh cannot please God. You jump in the flesh. You sitting there showing hate. You cannot please God. If you are a racist and teaching somebody to be a racist, you're teaching them not to please God. If you're teaching people that hate people because of political affiliation, you're not teaching them how to not please God. Just because people, that, you want differences, you want a different political parties for the whole purpose that we don't go into one nationalistic thinking, my way or the highway. And next thing you know, we're teaching and leading people to hell. Germany came, well, they become one in the flesh, not in the spirit, not to please God, but to please themselves. When they got to the point where they hunting people down the street, killing people, burning people, that's what they did in, in Germany. You can't please God in the flesh. Why would you, why would you, you as minister, just what pointed to you, you as minister, why would you let people exchange their soul for the flesh to go back to the default setting of the flesh? Why? Listen to, you. I know you're going, God, God is talking to you whether you like it or not. You know he's talking to you. You teach people to go after the flesh. You teach people to hate somebody because of the political party. You teach people to hate somebody because of the color of their skin. You allow it to happen. You say nothing about it. That makes you just as guilty about it. 400 years, you sit there and let them even come up with a black Bible, meaning taking the scriptures out. You know what the Bible said, that you don't take nothing out, don't add into it, but you did it anyway. You, ministers of God, you, parents, teaching your children to hate because of what? Because you don't want to please God? You want to exchange your soul? That's what you want to do? So they that, verse 8, so they that are, are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. So if you start talking about racism, you're not in the spirit, but you are in the flesh. 
But he is telling us not to be in the flesh. Anytime we allow and ministers, please listen. And people of the body of Christ, please listen. You must not operate in the flesh. You're supposed to grow and operate in the spirit. You're supposed to bear the fruits of the spirit. You're supposed to be the light of the world. And you're teaching your own child to be hate and be of darkness. What would you do to exchange your soul? That's, we have, oh man, we got so many people, please. <laughs> what would you do? What would a man do to gain the whole world and loses his soul? What would a parent do to gain everything for their child and lose their child's soul? For stuff. For position. What? But that does not make sense, does it? Verse 8 again. So then and there in the flesh not please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, if so be, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. And the tree is known by its fruit. We tell you from what's coming out of your mouth, we're coming out of your action, coming out of your thoughts, whether you are in Christ. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he has none of his. So if you're teaching hate, I don't care if you, you're teaching somebody to hate because of political affiliation, because of color of skin, that means God is not dwelling in you. A tree is known by its fruit. That's what you need to understand. A tree is known by its fruit. If you hated somebody because of color of skin, you hated somebody because of political affiliation, if you hate somebody because they're not in, from this, this country, and you're teaching that, and then you're justifying by lies, all this stuff is going on in this country, you're sitting there trying to, you, you as a believer, say nothing. Mass incarceration. Oh, well, they shouldn't have done it. Well, what about the people that did do it and get away with it? They're sitting in your congregation. What are you, what are you going to do about that? I'm talking about it. Why, why do you think the people have left the body of Christ? It's when we talk, when we operate in the hypocrisy. But you, you know, you want to be, we don't want to be of this world. We want to be in Christ. It said, first here, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, raised up Jesus from the dead, dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. I'm sorry that doesn't add up to your flesh. It's about, it's about the word of God and you being spiritual minded instead of teaching people and feeling good about a lie. God does not look at the outward appearance. Here's a story from the Old Testament that goes on talking about. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.